Hey there, my name's Anthony and welcome to Vibe with Velo. Today I'm going to be talking to you about collections and particularly the permissions you can set on your collections. So for those of you who might not be too familiar with collections, collections are basically places to store data for your website. Uh, this is a variety of data that your users will be able to read, sometimes create, sometimes even update and delete that data. And I'm going to be walking you through all the different uh, pre-settings we have for, for setting these up and also how to do your own custom settings and kind of what each, each permission means. So to start, let's actually go ahead and see how we can set these. So I'll come over to my website. And if I go ahead and I click on this little button here, I can choose edit settings. And then I can go over to additional settings. And here you'll see in this drop down under collection permissions, I have a whole bunch of permissions I can set. I can set site content so anyone can view the data in the collection. I can set form submission content so anybody could submit data to a collection. I can set permissions that are specific to mem only members of your site. These would be people who are actually logged in, actually have a, an account at your site. I can set it to only allow members to generate content. I can create content that is members only, uh, members only form submission, and even private data, which would fall under other permissions. I could even do completely custom permissions, and we'll get into that and all these other things in a little bit. So let me take you through this very helpful table I have, and I'll actually share a link on the screen that you can type into your web browser and check it out for yourself. Because on top of this table, there's a whole bunch of information here. So if at any point after watching this video, you're still a little bit confused, you want a bit more information, I think this is a great resource to go check out. So the first type of, of permissions we have, as you would have seen over here, is site content. Site content is a very simple set of permissions. It basically says, here is content that anyone, whether they are logged into my website or not, can read, can view on, on the website. This is content that you would use typically like if you had a set of uh, products for sale on your website, you had some sort of e-commerce store, you would use site content permissions because you would want anybody out there in the world to be able to see your products but you wouldn't want them to be able to create products, update or delete them. Okay, so that one's nice and simple. Then we have form submission content, which is form submission is very similar to uh, site content, except nobody can read it. Instead, everybody can submit it. So this might be, for example, if you had a contact form on your website, you would be able to set it as form submission and so anybody, whether they had an account or not, if they needed to reach out to you, they could. And so those are our two most basic types of permissions that you can set on any collection on your website. Then we have three here that are member generated or member related content. The first one is member generated content. This is content that much like regular site content, anyone can read. The difference here being that the way that data is actually created in the collection is different. So for member generated content, you would actually allow any site member to generate content for this. Now why would you want this? One example of why you would want this is if you had some sort of forum or message board where you wanted people to be able to create posts, they would be able to go ahead as a site member and create a post. And then anyone out on the internet would be able to go ahead and read it. And so that, that's great. You know, there's websites like Reddit and Stack Overflow and a bunch of other websites out there where you can do exactly that. Uh, then we have this very interesting setting. Um, as you'll notice here under create, we have site member. But under update and delete, we have site member author. And this is a somewhat special designation that basically says, if you were a site member and you went ahead and you created a row of data in this collection, you know, a post, for example, then only you will have the ability to update 
that row, update whatever you posted. Say if you made a text post and you needed to edit it, only you would be able to do that. Or if you wanted to delete it, only you would be able to, to delete it. No other member on the website would be able to delete it, besides the admin, of course, which would typically be you. So that's important to keep in mind there is that is the differentiation between site members who basically are any site member and site member authors who are site members who actually authored a specific part or row of the content of your collection. Okay, makes sense. Now moving on, we have members only content. This is actually very similar to site content as well, except this is content that you as the website owner uh, are basically creating specifically for your members. So whereas site content could be read simply by anyone, site member content can only be read by members. So if you had, for example, you wanted to incentivize people to join your website uh, and you produce content specifically for those people who are members of your website, then you can go ahead and set this as members only content. And much like site content, only you as the admin would be able to create, update, and delete that content. Then we have members only form submission. Uh, this one is actually very similar to regular form submission. Ex and it differs in kind of the same way that members only content differs from site content. But members only form submission is basically uh, anyone who is a member of your website and logged in will be able to use the form to submit uh, something to your collection, but nobody else would. And one case where you would typically do this is if you had some sort of support form that uh, members of your website would be able to fill out in order to get support from you, specifically because they are a member of your website, maybe they're buying a service or something from you. And you wouldn't want just anyone who is not a member to be able to go ahead and, and submit a support ticket because that doesn't make much sense uh, for, that, for that use case. So those are all the, the main ones. We also have private data. This is basically all set as admin. This is for when you have data that is not intended to be publicly facing at all. If you maybe had some sort of internal inventory or some other piece of data that you felt was important to running your website, uh, but only you needed to see it, then you would go ahead and you would select set your collection as private data. This might also be useful, for example, if you are testing out a new collection and you don't want it to be completely public yet, you could actually go ahead and set it as private data and, and mess around with it a bit on your website. But anyway, we do have one other option and that's custom use. So I'll take you over to that now. So down here, you past all the other ones, you can actually go ahead and select custom use. And you'll notice the button here changes to say set custom permissions. So if we click that, we can see that we can actually set permissions on who can read content, who can create it, who can update it, and who can delete it. So if we hit the drop down, we can see, oh, I can set the, the read permissions on this content to either admin, site member, author. Remember that's somebody specifically who had created the content the, the piece of content in that collection, or site member, which would be any anyone who is logged in on your website, or anyone which is literally anybody who can who is capable of visiting your website. So for example, I could set content that says, oh, I only want it readable by site members. And then on the create, I'll say, yeah, only creatable by site members. And on the update, I'll actually show you something very instructive here. I'll also say, well, I want my site members to be able to update their content, right? And I want my site members to be able to delete their content, of course, because they've created it. Now, if you're thinking about this, you might notice that there's something wrong here. Um, and what's wrong here in this particular case is when I go to under update and I select site member, or I go under delete and I select site member, I am saying, that anyone on your website can create this content and then anyone can go ahead and edit that content. And that's different from site member author, as I mentioned before, because for example, with these current permissions, if I were to go and make a post 
and you were to log into that website, both of us would be able to edit my post and update it. Or and both of us would be able to delete my post. But I wouldn't want that. I would actually want to set it as site member author. And same for delete site member author. So only me as the creator of my content can go ahead and update or delete that content. And conversely, only you as the creator of your content, assuming you're a regular user and not the admin user, can go ahead and create an update and delete your content. Uh, but here we've actually created a set of permissions that are different from the other permissions. So if you notice here, we've actually created a set of permissions that basically say, I want to have my website have posts and or content that my members could share, but I actually don't want the rest of the world to be able to see them if they're not logged into my website. Um, that's basically this read setting here. And if I were to set it as anyone, and we go back over here, what we can basically see is I've kind of set the same exact permissions as member generated content. Uh, but this is like a case where if you had this use case and you wanted your content to only be accessible to site members, even to just see the content, uh, you could use custom permissions. And there's a variety of other use cases that you could potentially see here. So I'll leave that up to you. But I would say that 99% of the time, the permissions that we have here already are going to serve you just fine. And that's basically it. Thank you very much for taking this time with me to look through collection permissions, to go over all the various types that we have over here. And if you need to a refresher or want to dive into this a bit more, I definitely recommend you visit the link that I've put up on the screen and check out this, this webpage because it'll help answer all your questions. And this has been Vibe with Velo, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.